Good morning. And welcome to worship at Meadowbrook Congregational Church. I'm Pastor Joel Boyd, and I'm blessed to serve this congregation and its friends. A special welcome to any visitors joining us here in person or online. We're glad to have you with us today. Well, friends, we're excited to be teaming up real soon with our friends, the families in the Northville Cooperative Preschool, which meets here at our church facility. Uh, to hold a joint trunk or treat event here at Meadowbrook. This is a Halloween themed event. Many of you may have seen these at a school or other place where people decorate the trunks of their vehicles, have costumes, pass out treats. We'll be meeting uh, outside in the parking lot this week on Friday, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. And this is an event for kids of all ages. You're invited to attend uh, either as a well, I don't know, I guess a trunk or a treater, whatever you want to be, I don't know how you'd be a trunk. I guess you could decorate if you want, or you could come just get treats. So all members and friends of the church are invited to uh, consider joining us for this and see uh, your weekly messenger email uh, for more information. Well, just recently, friends, we kicked off the stewardship season here at Meadowbrook. Each year we take an intentional time to kind of just center ourselves on what it means uh, for us to be the church together uh, and all the ways in which we can continue to support the many ministries of this congregation. So we hope you can all join us as we dig deep in our series uh, for stewardship and also our sermon series called Love Renewed, about how we're called to renew our love and renew our commitment to one another and to God as followers of Jesus. Now, all are welcome to join us for a special upcoming event we have in our stewardship series. This will be on Sunday, October 23rd, following worship, when during our normal fellowship hour, we'll be holding a special intergenerational program. It's just a fancy way to say all ages together. So we'll have all ages together for a program. We'll uh, be... uh, encouraging one another to live out our faith as being good stewards and caretakers for our world and what it looks like to do that together. Well, we have one uh, change in our bulletin this week, friends. We, as we pray that uh, our, our dear friend uh, Marilyn Sullivan is feeling better, uh, we also welcome uh, Lee Gross, who will be serving as our liturgist this morning. And at this time, friends, I'd like to invite Bonnie Hyde to come forward and share with us some special words about our rummage sale. Bonnie. Good morning, all. Uh, The the rummage ministry team, uh, Diane Chambers, Barbara Vanderhoff, and myself, put out a call uh, asking for help for rummage. And by Jiminy, we got it. We had lots of lots of workers. We had lots of fun. We, there's, there's lots of stories to tell. There's lots of camaraderie. Uh, stories to tell? Ask Barbara about uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald. Ask me about the ring. Um, so we had so many. So what we'd like to do is anyone who help set up, help during the week, help clean up. If you would stand, we would like to, to uh, thank you personally for all your help. And additionally, we'd like to thank all those who uh, brought their treasures to us because we had a lot. Um, there was, there, were, there was no line item in the budget for rummage this year for the 2022. So gratefully, we are adding a little over $2,100 to the operating budget. So thank you one and all. And folks, let's uh, put our hands together for a big thank you to Bonnie Hyde. Thank you everyone so much uh, for a a wonderful event 
Uh, a lot of people uh, to come in to explore our church. I know we had some people from our neighborhood join us, and that's always wonderful to get to talk to people uh, who are, are close to us. Um, well, friends, we have, as you know, uh, something upcoming here, uh, a dime war. I know we've done this before in the past, and many of you have many. Oh, oh we have uh, some more folks who want to talk about this? Oh, okay. Better listen to the experts. Dave, I can't wait until October 29th. John, can't, you can't wait till October 29th? Yeah, it's my Wolverines against your lowly Spartans. <laughs> oh, you mean the football game? Yes, when we win, we will seal the deal for the money from the Dine War to be sent to Ronald McDonald House in Ann Arbor. John, I know your memory's not like it used to be, and it's been three years, three years since uh, we've had the Dime War, but that's not exactly the way we decide which city gets the checks. Oh, it's that simple, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, your line, John, was, well, then who decides? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's, 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 whoops. Service may go to 11.30 today, folks. Okay. John, it's, it's, all, it's all the members and friends out there and back here. Yeah. Out back there. Okay. They decide where the money's going to go. It's that simple, huh? It's yeah, really simple. Yes, it's that simple. <laughs> and the first quarter of the game starts today. So folks, dust off your piggy banks. Well, even I messed up here. <laughs> they vote by with their spare change to make points to vote by with your spare change. Dust off your piggy banks. And come here, we've got two jars. One that says MSU and one that says U of M. And you take your dimes and your green money and you drop it into the MSU jar. <laughs> and your nickels and pennies and quarters and half dollars goes in the U of M jar. Just like that. It's that, that simple. Okay, but where are we here? All right. Since the Dime War's inception, we no, have not raised two thousand dollars. We're not there yet, John. Okay. We're not there. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we were there. We were there. <laughs> well, he's a MSU guy. And so we, uh, $2,000 to the Ronald McDonald House and out outreach ministry team, thank you very much. That being said, John and I have only one more thing to say. Go blue. Go green. Thanks, guys. And thank you, everyone, for supporting the Ronald McDonald House. Um, it would be a blessing. No matter where we are able to uh, have our, our funds go to, it will be, uh, be blessing families. Well, friends, let us now take a time to prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of our Lord.
Please join me in the call to worship. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection station. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. And as Jesus sat at the dinner table, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Please join me for the invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Lord, through the words of your preacher and Hebrew, you encourage us, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings to us closely, and let us run with perseverance 
the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who, for the sake of joy, was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We consider him who endured such hostility against himself, so that we may not grow weary in our souls or lose heart. Be with us, Lord, and fill us with your hope. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Children, come forward and listen. Next to you. <laughs> All right. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. All right. It's been a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Oh dear. You're tired. Oh no. Anyway, two weeks ago we had Sunday school, and do you remember what story we learned about? Do you remember the story of? Creation, yeah. You made those weird creatures, yeah. Um, what book of the Bible do you remember? Oh, Genesis. And do you remember what Genesis means? Close beginning. Very good. All right. Well, today's story also comes from the book of Genesis. And it's also one that you might have heard a time or two. It's about when God calls this man and tells him, <laughs> God does that a lot, um, and he tells this man to go build a really big boat. Have you heard this story before? You have? And what does he say to go out and get two of every, two of every animal? Can you imagine that? All right. Well, God trusted Noah to follow God's orders and take care of all of those animals on that boat or ark, right? Whatever you're going to name it now. Um, do you think that was easy? No. no. I know you guys have a cat. Do you have an animal, Alyssa? No? Okay. Do you know somebody who has a pet, like one of your friends or your relatives? Yeah? All right. Uh, taking care of animals is not always easy, is it? It is when they're fun, but sometimes. You spend you feed them? Your mom does? Yeah, you play you help. All right. Well, today, along with learning about Noah in Sunday school, we're going to do a fun little project for pets in our lives. All right? So you guys ready? All right. Clara's going to lead us there. Dear God, thank you for all of the animals. Help us to remember that you created the world and everything in it. Show us the way we can make a difference in the lives of the animals and people around us. Amen. 
Please join me in reading our church covenant together. I covenant with the members of this church that I will walk with you in all Christian faith and love, following the example of Jesus Christ, showing forth Christian teaching, keeping the sacraments, and giving materially for the advancement and the precepts and concepts of Christianity. Further, that I will be loyal to the interest and objectives of this church as long as I remain a member of it. Further, that I will share in its service, bear in love and cooperation its burdens, wait upon its opportunities, deepen its fellowship to the end that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, let us now take a time to raise those prayers of our innermost hearts to the Lord as we pray in a moment of silence.
loving God. You call us to give of ourselves that we may all further your kingdom. Lord, we are far from perfect, but we long to follow your ways, to make the sacrifices as Jesus taught us. So Lord, we ask that you hear all of our prayers and give your people the strength and courage to follow the path you call us to. Lord, we pray for Pat Dunwell as she recovers from a recent gallbladder surgery. We pray for Mike Newbert, Scott and Colleen Foster's nephew, as Mike is in need of a heart transplant and his genetic heart condition was made worse by a recent bout of COVID. Lord, we pray for Carol Meglin and for Betsy Mazurkowitz as they recover from COVID and give thanks that Lisa Gross is now feeling better after her time with COVID. We pray for Denise Parr as she continues her recovery with a knee replacement surgery. And we pray for Sally Greslick as she continues on with her recovery from a recent surgery. We pray for Judy Grass as she moves forward with her cancer treatment. And we pray for Amanda McKenzie Colleen Foster's sister-in-law, as she has been diagnosed with breast cancer and has been recovering from her recent surgery. Lord, we pray for all the families impacted by the recent violent attack in Thailand. We continue to pray for Bob Smith as he battles prostate cancer. And we pray for the people of Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Florida in the wake of recent hurricanes. Lord, we pray for all your people as we are continuing to be impacted by COVID-19 that we may all be safe. We pray for your guidance, safety, and your healing power, Lord, that they may be present in Ukraine, and that the war there may come to an end. Lord, we also give you the prayers of our hearts with joy for all the gifts that you give us, for all the blessings. And Lord, we give you thanks for uh, the blessing of new, uh, new news, exciting new news, uh, and uh, the Boyd household of uh, several cousins that are having babies. So uh, at least three more cousins on the way and one more expected, and one more just born. Lord, we give you thanks for and wish a happy birthday to Jessica Hokett Stephenson, who celebrates her birthday this coming week. We raise Carrie Skralik and Mark Dukes to you, Lord, as they celebrate their anniversary, as well as adorn the sanctuary with the flowers we have uh, in celebration of their anniversary. Lord, I give you thanks for Heidi and for our anniversary as we celebrate this coming week. Lord, we raise all these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, to whom all good things come. Amen. Friends, the offering for the work of this church and all of its ministries that connect to inside our church as well as outside to our community and beyond. 
will now be received. Let us pray. Loving, giving God all that we have and all that we say and do comes from you. Lord, bless these, our gifts, that they may be used to further your kingdom, your glory, that all your people may come into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, friends, today we, we actually have a sermon scripture passage that we have just sang a line from ourselves in that offertory uh, hymn, Jesus Remember Me. That is the line we have here in our passage at the end by the the thief that speaks to Jesus uh, kind of in a very surprising fate at the end. As he dies on the cross next to Jesus, he asks him to remember him. So now we pray that the Lord may open our hearts and minds as we witness to the word and the gospel according to Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 43. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus. There with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. 
Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel message of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When you are at the end of your rope, the last thing you expect is that something great is just around the corner. The two criminals who were crucified next to Jesus would have had every reason to fear what came next. Pain, suffering, the unknown minutes, hours, or, or even days leading to death. and. And then what? In the time of Jesus' crucifixion, we have a pretty good idea that in addition to perpetrators of kind of heinous crimes, it was a punishment reserved for those who pose a big threat to the powers that be. Typically people who were a political threat or an enemy of the state. They would have been the ones who were crucified. Perhaps partly to make it especially painful and humiliating, but also because it was a deterrent, a disturbing warning to those who might otherwise think differently and to stay in line. Crucifixion was used this way. In other words, it was a brutal means of maintaining control. Here at the end of Luke, the outlook is pretty bleak. We might wonder what thoughts were actually in the minds of those two criminals as they were hung on the crosses next to Jesus. What were they thinking? Did they despair? Had they gone simply numb? Were they resigned? Or did they fight it every last step of the way? And when we feel as though our well has run dry, what thoughts race through our mind? We may feel it's very different to relate as we're not typically 
enemies of the state, hopefully. But who's to say that those guys next to Jesus really were either? We know that they were crucified and called criminals and that one of them insults Jesus while the other one chastises the one who threw out the insult. That's what we see in Luke. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. When we're isolated, living through a time of challenge, a time of darkness, it does not seem to us like the light is right there next to us, just waiting to be seen. While magnified beyond any previous experience during the early COVID-19 lockdowns, human isolation and separation, well, they all still persist now. As we continue to wrestle with the virus and become a little bit more entrenched in a culture of digital technology that doesn't always bring us together and political divisiveness that often keeps us apart. Now, a short moment ago, we once again affirmed our own church covenant and the covenant promises that we have with one another. We confessed our mutual call in following the example of Jesus Christ. Now, over the last couple weeks in our, our series, Love Renewed, we've been exploring our covenant. We explored what it looks like for us to promise with one another as a church. What does that look like? And we also listened to the voices of our youth alongside our own as we considered how we might go about walking with one another in all Christian faith and love. Many of you offered beautiful, simple, and very difficult things for us to consider, how we listen to one another, what our priorities are, and how that relates to walking with one another. And in so doing, we've witnessed our own words, right? in our covenant and in scripture that we are a people called to make good on our promises to listen to one another and to God and to help bear challenges together we face them side by side well today in our series we remember our covenant and what it has to say about us being called to follow the example of Jesus Christ. What does that mean to us? Note, not the example that one powerful person expects, or a group of people, or nor the example that any specific broader culture or, or tradition may expect, but rather what we are called to follow as our church when we follow the example of Jesus Christ himself. Now in congregationalism, we uphold the freedom of conscience in the individual believer, right? That freedom to discern the scriptures, but we also do so together as the church. This means that where there's great freedom, there's also great responsibility. In other words, we as a congregational church have a great responsibility to read and to study the Bible. We're called to dig deeper and deeper to see what that example might be for us in the actions of Jesus. And these are things that we talk about together. We might have different understandings about it, but we gather together as one church to talk about them. 
And I guess I didn't mention how hard that is. <laughs> it can seem very easy to look up things and to see what we maybe want. But it's different when we see things that perhaps we feel are convicting to us, things that we should, and also how we describe this. How do we, how do we explain what's really in our heart to one another, to living, breathing people right next to us that are helping serve in some ministry with us, going out into our neighborhood doing something, helping with a rummage sale? How do we talk about that? How do we do it lovingly? openly, welcoming, thinking of differences. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This is not easy. <laughs> it can be easier. It can be easier to not have to uh, look at that the same kind of way, where everyone may have one specific point of view that is enshrined for us. But it is different in our ways. And it can be difficult to dig into the scriptures and to see that they charge us to do things. They, they call us to do stuff that may not be what we always want to think about. It may be inconvenient. It may be hard. It may mean that we change our lives. It may mean that we change together to go out and to help other people. That's not easy. We may be asking ourselves how much more work we must really do. How many things should we really be giving up? And why is it so hard for us to do this? Why is it so hard to follow Jesus? Maybe in the culture we live in, where we are, maybe even where we are personally on any given day. What's going on in our lives? Well, I'll tell you one thing, the way of the world and the way the world has been for thousands of years, as far as we can tell, is that it always wants to give glory to itself, to what it deems to be powerful and worthy. From the riches and power of ancient kings and queens that we may read about in books or online, to maybe even the bandits or thieves who steal from them, only to then in time become kinds of kings and queens in their own way. We've seen that happen. People have a bad habit of raising their claim to glory and to power above all else. We want it for our own. Right? We want it above everything else, especially including those who are disenfranchised and perhaps need the most help. And because of this habit as people, what well, we tend to raise those up who are on the inside of the power structure and who have glory already. We raise them up. Seeing them as kind of natural allies in our own desire to get Something similar, even though sometimes we might be a little delusional about that, right? I loved to play football as a kid, but I weighed like 110 pounds and got creamed. So my hopes of being, you know, uh, you know Barry Sanders was just not going to happen, right? And I know many of you have joined me in that over, over years of looking at these folks that, and now many of these folks do give back amazing things. So I don't mean to represent all groups of people. But often we want to be connected with, associated with people that are on the inside of power, that have all the resources, that have all these things. And it's almost to say or to suggest that we're not enough with how God has made us. So we see the power brokers as our allies. Insiders then have kept outsiders from even entering in, whether it be to the games, to the church, to, to different places of power, influence, to be a boss. For thousands of years. And we see that reflected in 
the scripture stories that we have. We see how this happens. Who tries to clamor for power? We see it in the Herod family as they claim to have uh, power in a way that isn't, it doesn't even really belong to them. They're not even supposed to be having this. They're propped up by Rome. But we also see how God acts and God works through people to reach those who have the least amount of power, the least amount of influence or glory. We see that all over Scripture, how God is, is reaching outward to people and pulling them in. In many ways, that's what worship is. We're coming from somewhere else to be together, to praise God together. Whether we are gathered in li online or gathered in person, we are gathered, a gathered people. Now, in particular, we see this in the biblical actions of Jesus, who continually reaches out to and includes people who were at one time, very recently, often in the previous sentence, on the outside, on the outside of the power structure. Jesus takes the lowly child who would have had no power and puts them in the middle and then says to even his close friends and all these other people that they need to become like the child, not the other way around. They need to become like the child, humble like the child, if they have any hope of entering God's kingdom. Jesus raises up widows, tax collectors, the sick, lame, the blind, all people who would have been disenfranchised for various reasons, who would have had less to no power. He even includes people outside the family of Israel, which some people took almost personally. When he points to neighbor, neighborly love and the example he gives, as being a Samaritan, somebody outside of the immediate family there. While the world looks at things kind of from the inside out, when we look at the scriptures, we see that Jesus, what he really tends to do is he ministers from the outside in. He does the opposite. The world Inside out, Jesus outside in, including, bringing, welcoming, flipping things on their head. Dying on the cross, dying on the cross, having no reason that we know of to hope or to have faith of any kind, right? That other criminal says something to Jesus, which is really kind of amazing. Right? Even if we take it that this person committed a, a, you know, a very lowly kind of crime that wasn't meriting that situation, we're, we're thinking this is a criminal who's dying, right? And he says something to Jesus, something which reveals more faith than we really can possibly imagine. He says, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Having come to the end of the line with quite literally everyone having given up on him, you couldn't be given up on more. This criminal through the darkness of perhaps done some things not right himself also, we still see the light of faith and hope emerge from the outside in. Right? This other guy is insulting Jesus. He corrects that person and expresses faith as one of the last things he could possibly do before he dies. That's what he does. And Jesus answers him, Truly, I tell you, Today, you will be with me in paradise.
Friends, when it may seem that nothing else matters, that no one cares, when it may seem that way, Jesus still rescues us anyway. No matter what the powers of the world may think or what was likely to happen, what was popular, Jesus loves us and includes us and doesn't give up on us. Friends, may we never give up on Jesus. Make it so. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing our sending hymn number 41, To God Be the Glory. In the book of Acts, the uh, Apostle Peter speaks in surprising ways about how God calls us to welcome others. Peter says, you yourselves know that it is improper for a Jew to associate with or to visit an outsider. But God has shown me 
that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. May we hear these words of Peter, and as followers of Jesus, open our hearts to welcome all God's people in the church. And now may the Lord God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer bless you, nourish you with the word, give you strength for the task, and send you as followers of Christ Jesus. Amen.